This program is brought to you by Emory University. When you're looking at a plant, you're looking at a collection of nanomachines that are optimized to work together to do light harvesting, charge separation, uh, and then catalytic chemistry to both uh, oxidize water and produce oxygen. So all aerobic life on Earth depends on producing oxygen. And then the other part of the reaction is to take the electrons from water and the protons from water and make hydrocarbons and store a tremendous amount of energy. So all the energy we use in our daily lives, the gas that we put in our automobile, ultimately come from plants and from this process of photosynthesis. That's why it's so important for us to learn how to harness the same incredible energy source, the sun. So the challenge for us is how will we uh, mimic photosynthesis and do it in a way that's very efficient and yet doesn't rely on a living system like a plant. So we're uh, using quantum dots as our molecular machine for light harvesting and charge separation. And then we're coupling quantum dots with uh, catalytic systems for both oxidizing water and then producing hydrogen. What our group in collaboration with others uh, is endeavoring to achieve now is to come up with the first stable molecular family of water oxidation catalysts. That's probably the hardest thing uh, ultimately in the uh, solar splitting of water. That is converting sunlight and water into hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen being a clean, a green, sustainable fuel. We've made actually a lot of progress uh, for which I can thank many co-workers and collaborators uh, both here and overseas. We're early in this process but we have right now several uh, catalysts that uh, uniquely that are um, uh, soluble uh, and we believe stable uh, and fast in catalyzing the oxidation of water to oxygen gas. I think we demonstrate that, that we could actually really use light shining on this um, catalyst and in water and, and spread water and make oxygen. And that, I think that's a very important uh, achievement. So we have uh, sunlight coming in, or, or in our case it would be a xenon lamp to mimic the sunlight. So that was our light source. And we shine this uh, into this, this cuvette that containing water and then our catalyst, okay? And so, and then also a sensitizer, that's what gonna absorb the sunlight. So this molecule absorbs the sunlight, okay? And then it give out an electron. And this now uh, basically become an oxidant. And that gonna oxidize the catalyst, right? And if you do this four times, okay? Now the catalyst get oxidized four times, it then can go on to oxidize water to make oxygen and proton. Right? Mm -hmm. So what you see in the bubble that's actually oxygen to form it. That's the most challenging step in solar water spreading. Once you oxidize this water as we've shown here, then you can make proton and that proton can later on can be used uh, to make hydrogen and that's a fuel you need. And that's a relative easier uh, relatively easier step. It turns out that nature is also inspiring us in, as to how to produce hydrogen, not by photosynthesis, because nature doesn't uh, produce hydrogen by photosynthesis, but uh, there are bugs that live in swamps. They're actually anaerobic organisms. They live down in the mud in regions where there's no oxygen. And they uh, have a particular molecular machine, an enzyme called hydrogenase. Hydrogenase is by far the most uh, efficient catalysts that we know for producing hydrogen. Uh, what we're trying to do is, first of all, take hydrogenase, the protein, the enzyme, stabilize it and couple it to the quantum dots and use what nature has already developed, use this incredibly efficient catalyst directly um, and by coupling it to uh, a second machine that will do the light harvesting and uh, charge separation and then the catalyst itself will produce the hydrogen. Well, Emory has a unique opportunity to, to really uh, be ahead of the rest of the, the world, really, because of this confluence of these three different efforts, the water oxidation, the light harvesting, quantum dots, and the hydrogen production enzymes. And the integration of those three components 
into a whole system. So there's a lot of applied aspect to it, but a lot of work we do is very fundamental. is 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 looking at details of these process, how they occur, how can we understand them, and can we optimize them? I find it a, a, a fascinating problem, scientific problem, as well as an important problem to work on. Because I think without uh, a renewable, clean energy uh, and source. The greenhouse effect of CO2 is going to raise the temperature of the Earth. That's going to make it, uh, will change, I think, the ecosystem to such a way that life as we know it uh, will be very different or may not be sustainable. I think people love uh, the idea of doing chemistry with sun and making green energy and stopping uh, combustion, uh, pollution, and whether it's smog or CO2, which you can't see. Um, it's just it's one of those things that, you know, that, regardless of where you are, your background, or your political leanings, it's something that everybody agrees on. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.